we were at my uncle's house and my older cousin, he was playing with the gun and just so happened my sister walked through and the gun went off and mm -hmm. blew her head off in front of us. My mother started doing drugs and I started seeing her less and I was with my grandparents, you know, majority of the time after that. And they tried to give me everything, you know, that I wanted, but what I really needed was somewhere to be there for me. The name of this show is Your World. And so, you know, I appreciate you allowing us to, to come in your world. You know, Christians would look at this and, well, you know, why don't y'all just start preaching and stuff like that? No, I want people to understand the reality of what you have gone through and the, the reality of your experience so that they can see and understand the greatness of God's grace. And, and I'm sitting here looking at you right now. If you're not a picture of grace, I don't understand what grace is. Welcome to Your World. I'm Creflo Dollar. And on today's show, we are tackling a national crisis, a toxic growing epidemic that's destroying families across the globe. It's called addiction. Every single day, 114 people die in the United States as a result of drug overdoses and misuse. 114 people a day. Now think about that number. That's hundreds and hundreds of children forced to live without a parent. That's so many hundreds of parents suffering the tragic loss of their son or daughter every single day. Now, the devastating impact of addiction not only affects those addicted, it can destroy the lives of everyone around them. So today I want to provide grace-based solutions to help you or those you love win the battle against addiction. If you or someone you know is in the grip of addiction, well, you won't want to miss a minute of today's show. There is victory obtained through grace, and we're getting into it today, right here on Your World. Changing one life, time after time, oh Lord, we do it all for you. Through the trials I see, Today, Keisha is here to share her story. Keisha, thank you so much for joining us on, the, on your world because we, we want to come into your world today and we want to find out what it's like to experience the addiction of a parent. Walk us down those events and, and, and where, it, where it has you right now here today. In 1986, um, we were at my uncle's house and my older cousin, he was playing with the gun and I asked him, you know, what was he doing? And I believe he was just, you know, curious and just wanted to, you know, play with the gun. So I f followed him and um, we went into his parents' uh, bedroom and he sat on the bed and he was messing with the gun and just so happened my sister walked through and the gun went off and mm. blew her head off in front of us. And, and you were what, 10? Yes, sir. Nine, ten, something. And, and I can imagine you, you still have that, that image in your head today. Yes, sir. Now, when your mom really as a parent had to deal with this, it's just something unnatural about a parent having to bury their child. What were some of the first things as a kid that you noticed as her life began to change with drugs and maybe even her job were some of the things that you remember? She became distant mm -hmm. and I felt like she neglected me because she lost my sister and I felt like, you know, she felt like she lost everything. Um, I felt alone and I was hurt because I didn't have any therapy. I didn't know how to deal with the situation. And I really didn't know how to communicate with anyone. I can't, didn't know how to express what I was going through. So I was silent with it. And my mother, she started doing drugs and 
I started seeing her less and I was with my grandparents, you know, majority of the time after that. And they really didn't know, they were there for me and they tried to give me everything, you know, that I wanted. But what I really needed was somewhere to be there for me. And I suffered for a long time. And my sister, she was like my best friend. And there you go. Feelings of uh, abandonment, uh, depression, and not knowing what that was all about, confusion, and nobody really breaking it down so that you can understand that, you know, what had happened. Keisha, do you really ever get over something like that? It takes a long time. Mm -hmm. And your mother, let's talk about her for a moment. Um, she's trying to deal with her pain. Yes, sir. And um, she turns to drugs. Yes, sir. And um, she loses her job. Yes, sir. She ends up in jail. Yes, sir. So now, in a sense, you lost your sister and you lost your mother at the same time. At the time, you, you had to be really going through a, a lot of issues of abandonment. Yes, and was that ever in your life something that uh, you were able to come to grip with? Or do you find that it's affecting you in other areas right now today? I had experienced so much trauma and death at a young age until it was hard for me to look at things, that, you know, in a good way. Mm -hmm. And um, on top of that, um, after my sister died, my grandparents decided to go to Detroit and I went with them and um, we were going through the Ozark Mountains and my grandfather fell asleep in the peak of the mountains mm. and we went down like 200 feet Wow! and it threw us all out the car Wow! and it broke my grandfather's neck, it crushed my grandmother's shoulder and hip, it cut my eyelid off, kept, cut my ear off and it uh, temporarily paralyzed me and and it disfigured my face um, so bad until I was supposed to have plastic surgery and I could just say the Lord healed me miraculously. Boy that's the power of God's grace isn't it? And I must say through all the things that I've been through I've seen God's miracles as well. Yeah, yeah. The name of this show is Your World. Yes sir. And so you know I appreciate you allowing us to, to come in your world. You know, Christians would look at this and, well, you know, why don't y'all just start preaching and stuff like that? No, I want people to understand the reality of what you have gone through and the, the reality of your experience so that they can see and understand the greatness of God's grace. What did you do to deserve to be alive today? I look at your face right now. What did you do to have your face looking like it is right now when it could have looked uh, another way. Look at all of what, what God has, has done in the midst of everything that you've gone through. I see an example of what this show is all about, the grace of God, yes, unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor that he's obviously shown to you. And, and my, my, heart, my heart rejoices in one aspect, in the other, I'm like, how can one person experience so much? And yet I see the power of God's grace on your face. Amen. Your face is good. Your face is good. Uh, so your, your mom went to prison. You spent, what, most of your teenage years with your grandparents? Yes, sir. Uh, and so she, she gets out of prison and tell me about, walk us through that relationship, uh, that encounter with your mom and the things you guys had to do to try to rekindle a relationship. Well, to be totally honest, I had so much resentment mm -hmm. against my mom and I was hurt and I was dealing with so much from the accidents and going through so much until I, um, I was angry yeah. with her sure. and it seems like everybody else was angry with her. And my mom, one thing when she was on the drug on drugs, the drugs kind of like had her somewhere else. But people didn't understand what I was lacking was, you know, my mother's attention, mm -hmm. you know, and family members and friends. But they didn't know how I was hurting inside, you know, going through all these um, traumatic um, 
events or whatever. But in 2009, I'm drive. I'm on um, downtown Atlanta, driving down the street, and I look up, and there is this big SUV heading towards me, going like 65, 70 miles per hour, and she hit us head on. But when they pulled me out the car, I found out that my hip was broken half. So we made it to the emergency room. They scanned me. I didn't have a scratch on me, but they said, Miss Tate, you know, your hip is broke, broken in half, and we're going to have to put you in surgery. So they had to put a pin in my hip. And the doctors told me, they was like, well, Miss Tate, um, you know, we're just going to let you know now. You're not going to be the same anymore. You're going to um, probably walk with the limp. I went from laying in the bed, walker, crutches to a cane, to walking in like three months. I went to the doctor, and the first miracle was, I was listening to you. You said, you know, speak God's word. I was declaring, by his stripes I am healed. I said it every day, even when I was going through anxiety and depression. And I went to the doctor because they said it would take like a calendar year for my hip to heal. I went back, and the doctor was looking at my x-ray, and he was like frowning. And I was like, uh, sir, what's wrong? He was like, Miss Tate. Do you see this little line right here on your X-ray? I said, yes, sir. He said, your bone mended back together. Knocking okay, us. Okay, ho, ho, whoa. <laughs> if you're not a picture of grace, Amen. I don't understand what grace is. Amen. I don't understand what grace is. Uh, yeah. I, I stopped you because I had to say this. There is obviously a calling of God on your life. There is obviously something that you're supposed to do. Maybe it, maybe it starts right here on this couch as, as our viewers uh, look at this. And because what it does, it, you know, the guy that's complaining about, well, I, I'm tired of eating salmon, <laughs> you know, or, or the lady that complains about, well, this is the wrong weave. All of a sudden, I don't have any problems. Yes, All of a sudden, my situations are just not big. And I see, I see his unmerited favor. And I don't mean to start preaching, but you got me excited. I see his unmerited favor showing up time and time and time. And I have to ask the question, you know, what is it that you did to deserve God's attention to deliver you over and over and over again, if it were not by the grace of God that he did it? This is just mind boggling. Listen, the, the effects of her life and all that she has experienced, um, just think about what addictions cause to happen in people's lives. And I'm not saying that, that, that all of this happened as a result of your mother's addictions, but you and I both agree that somebody else's addictions can also impact your life. And, uh, and if that, that was enough, but all of these other things that have come, uh, God's grace continues to show up and deliver us. And um, there are solutions. There is a way. Let's meet someone who has lived this life of drug dependency. Folks, he's walked in their shoes. And today he is here to tell you how the grace of God saved his life and now reaches thousands, and I mean thousands of young people, and introducing them to the power of God's grace. Please welcome to your world, Matt Pitt. Would you please take the opportunity? You, you, you have shared with thousands of young people. Right. But walk us through those events yeah. up to where you are right now so we can see the grace of God on your life as well. Right. My dad was an alcoholic, um, so I didn't see him that much. My whole house was a wreck. I mean, I'm, I'm not just a, a problem child from the fetus. I'm talking about it was, it was, it was a wreck, everybody. And then I'm, I'm in and out of every kind of school, seven different schools. I'm, I'm not just a problem child. I couldn't even understand what was going on in the classroom. So I was always outside. I mean, I was, every teacher telling me, you ain't gonna make it, you ain't gonna become anything. So our whole life story and our family was everybody saying nothing good's gonna come from this family, no way. Not him, not his daddy, not his sister. 
Um, and so to make a long story short, you know, I get expelled. I'm in and out of school. I can't figure, my mom ends up having to homeschool me um, because no school was going to take me in the area. I'd just been in and out of every different, different scenario. And my mom believed in God, man. She believed in God 24-7. You know, she was one of them praying mamas, walking down the hall, got a Bible and covering everything in the blood. She'd come up to people, I cover you in the blood. I'd have to tell my friend she smokes weed. I'm not kidding you. I, I did. I was like, I'm sorry, man. We got, you know, she's covering everything in the blood. And she was kind of a freak for God. And uh, so I was blessed to have a mama that was always praying. No matter what dope scene I was in, no matter what my, my, what my dad had going on, my sister, she was praying 24-7. She believed there was a spiritual war, you know, going on in the house. I'd go to her room just to find out if she was here. I'd look at my sister and my dad. I'd like, the rapture, no, they'll still be here. Well, where's my, <laughs> where my mom? Serious. Every morning I was freaked out because she was always saying, Jesus, coming back. You better be ready. And, and I'm at nighttime going to bed thinking, man, I'm high. I hope he ain't coming back tonight. I hope he ain't coming back tonight. And so my whole family is a wreck. My dad's really battling addiction. Uh, um, my sister was sexually um, raped by somebody, she starts losing all of her hair due to this depression she went into. So you can only imagine addiction's about to get serious. And she's locking herself in a room at nighttime, um, you know, figuring out how to kill herself. And this whole thing's going on in my house. And I'm looking at my mom going, how can you believe in God? He ain't doing nothing for dad. He ain't doing nothing for my sister. And, and he clearly ain't doing nothing for me because I'm on these drugs and I can't get off. So I get down to college and, and about 90,000 people in the stadium, and I have a drug overdose right there. But it, again, it was one of those times where mama was there. She, the only time she shows up at the university was the day of this, this event. And there she is with my dad, and, and she always knew she would be there. Boom. It was like God would send her down there. She didn't care nothing about no football. She could care less. But there she was just looking. We walk up into this game, and, and I wake up in the back of an ambulance bus. But there she was just rocking in a corner, and she was saying, the devil can't have my baby. The devil can't have my baby. I'm looking at her thinking, you better pray because I'm telling you, I'm going in and out. I'm going in and out of this life. I don't know what's going on, but this is it for me. But she was praying, saying, no, 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 God's got a plan. The devil can't. And I'm, no matter what the doctors are saying in the room, she's saying he ain't going to have you. And, uh, and she knew there was a bigger plan. And uh, I still couldn't get rid of this addiction. I couldn't get rid of this mess in my life. Matt, tell us about that addiction. Oh, I mean, it was just, it was 24-7. Anybody in it knows it. You got to keep chasing something to, to take care of what's going on in your mind, to take care of maybe somebody telling you ain't, you're a failure, maybe somebody telling you it ain't going to work out. It's 24-7. When people get wrapped up in this life, um, you, you, you put everybody else at risk. And Dr. Dollar keeps talking about this grace. I fell to my knees and, and something that, that, that no drug has ever given me, something that that no feeling has ever given me something that I can never explain in a million years. When I hit the knees in this poor little house in this basement, and I just cried out to God, and I said, man, I, I, I know I got dope in my pockets. I ain't got nothing off you. I don't have a dollar. I ain't nothing but a lie. To you. I have nothing. I have nothing to offer you. And I surrendered to him. And I had no idea after I hit my knees in that basement that I was going to be able to go get all these other people who are going through the same struggle. And man, when they all found how good God was, when everybody found how good God was, on, that he would take it all away from you. He'd get rid of it. He wasn't counting it. He wasn't, he wasn't sitting and recording. Look, he just took it away. When every addict in my streets found that out, every dope boy, every drug dealer, everybody found that out. Man, it was a 20 four seven revival and God basically ripped that one thing out of their life and said I'm gonna give you another day I'm gonna give you something better than that and I'm telling you man we got addicted to that word we got addicted to work we do it 24 7 man it kept me up later than any drug could I stay up worshiping all night long and here I turn into the freak I turn into the to the freak my mama was now, now I'm walking around the basement and I'm covering people in the blood I'm serious I tell my friend I cover you in the blood I plead the blood over here and I'm going oh my goodness what's happened to me I'm just like her now but I realized she was in it, man. She had tapped in. And you have no idea. She could have, it was 24 years, 360 something days. She could have given up any minute and she could have just thrown in the towel. But no, she kept praying. She kept believing that God had a breakthrough coming, that he was going to do something. And when he radically did it, my dad got off of alcohol. He radically turned his life around. Man, the, one of the reasons that bottle had him hemmed up is
is because he was going to become one of the most radical little preachers and evangelists. He was hitting the streets, knocking on doors. Man, have you have you met God? He was he was so amped up. Everyone, he'd go in gas station. Have y'all met God? It's like it's like something keeps you from from experiencing it and knowing it. And then the whole world gets to know it because you experienced it. So for him, man, when he laid down that bottle and he picked up that word, it was over. Uh, when I laid down that dope and picked up that, it was over. When my sister, the minute my sister let go of all this hurt and all this bitterness, honestly, she was bald. She had to wear do-rags around her head because of her hair being lost. The minute she picked up this thing that says God heals, if you let go, her hair began to grow back from her head. To this day, she has a full hair ahead, and it's going crazy. I love it. I love it, man. Uh, do, do you guys agree with me that this is a stick of dynamite? Yes. <laughs> and, and, and Matt, would you agree yeah, with me like, that there's a serious call on Keisha's life? Serious call. Yes. For somebody, I mean, I mean, you, you heard his testimony, Keisha. Yes, sir. Uh, yours involved falling off mountains, getting hit with cars, all of that other kind of stuff. And, and yet your mother's addiction caused a lot of abandonment here. And on the other hand, you replaced one addiction with a new addiction. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. Yeah. And so what I'm saying to, to you guys today, uh, get addicted to God's word. That's it. Get addicted to God's spirit. Get That's addicted and believe what he has already said that he would do for you. Um, that's what your world is all about. We've had the opportunity to go into, into, into the, the world of our, our guests here today mm. and what they're sharing with you. They're saying, hey, this is real. These things that happen, they, they, they happen. They are genuine. They're real. And yet there is a grace that can make the difference in your life. And, and we've made our mind up mm -hmm. that we're going to we're going to come into every world. We're coming into every household. Mm -hmm. That's that's why I'm doing this show right now. Yeah. Whatever it takes. When I leave this earth, I plan on leaving empty mm -hmm. and we're pouring it out so that you guys can understand that there is power in the grace of God. Don't you appreciate our guests here today? And what they Yes, but I encourage you today. If you are hurting because of the consequences of loved ones with addiction, God has grace for you. And if you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, there is a way out. First of all, you have to acknowledge the purpose of that addiction. In other words, what are you doing it for? Why are you doing it? And then secondly, you have to have rational thinking versus denial. The third way to break addictions of any kind, you have to use alternative coping skills. Uh, for example, if a person says that I, I, I drink because I'm stressed out or there's a lot of pressure in my life um, and I take that coping skill away from them, then they most likely will go back to that addictive behavior uh, versus replacing it with something. Uh, what you want to do is maybe instead of drinking uh, to deal with your stress, you, you might want to do breathing exercise, you might want to add some activity there. Uh, you want to make sure that you uh, replace that uh, coping skill with another coping skill. Number four, you have to identify the danger zones. In other words, what's going on when I, I yield to this uh, addictive behavior? Where am I when I yield? With, uh, to this behavior. Who am I around? What's going on around me? Uh, identify the danger zones. And then you've got to, number five, make sure that you're ready to change your life. It, it's one thing to have willpower, but we want you to program your life for success. In other words, set yourself up for success. Uh, if you uh, find yourself going by the store and, and buying cigarettes and you're trying to stop, then don't carry cash. If you're addicted to some type of pornography on the computer, get the computer out of the house. The quickest way to deal with any type of uh, addictive behavior is to deny access and to remove those things from you. And then you want to make sure that you're accountable. Have a support system. I'm not talking about anybody that just will just add positive support just to make you feel good. But you need somebody to kick you in the butt when you need it. And you need somebody to tell you the truth. You need somebody that's not going to water it down. It is what it is, and that's what you're going to hear. 
when you get yourself involved in uh, that addictive behavior. And then finally, reward is important. Motivation is important. And you should be willing to reward yourself uh, by just saying, I give myself credit that I'm getting better. Um, motivation is important, even to the point where you will come to the place of admitting that this is a problem for me and, and to ask for help. So these are practical things you can look at. I know that the power of God's grace is there to deliver you from anything. In fact, we believe that the grace of God has already accomplished that. But it's also important for us to begin to break some things down, make it practical, begin to recognize some things as we yield in our faith to what grace has already made available. I want to get some resources into your hands to direct you or help you help someone you love um, down a, a healthier road in their life, a road that leads away from all the pain and the disappointment and the shame and towards healing. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call. Help is just one step away. We'll be right back. Are you ready to see the pain of addiction and addictive behavior defeated in your life? Are you ready to see your loved ones, your children, and future generations free forever? As you've seen right here on today's program, you can put an end to the devastating effects of addiction. Keisha is seeing victory over the negative circumstances that her mother's addiction brought on. And you saw the miraculous deliverance from addiction that occurred in Matt Pitt's life, leading him to launch a ministry to thousands of young people. I had no idea after I hit my knees in that basement that I was going to be able to go get all these other people who are going through the same struggle. And man, when they all found how good God was, when every addict in my street found that out, every dope boy, every drug dealer, everybody found that out, man, it was a 24-7 revival. Call now to receive an all-new collection from Creflo Dollar that will show you step-by-step step how to stop the effects of addiction. First, you'll receive Creflo Dollar's life course entitled, God is Big, Sin is Small. In this five-part series, learn the strategies to recognize the traps of addiction and how by following God's Spirit, you and your loved ones can stay away from them. Next, you'll receive Creflo Dollar's book, You Can Stop, where he reveals practical solutions to breaking the cycle that causes addictive patterns and behaviors. You'll also receive the program you saw today on DVD. Inside, you'll also get the question and answer session with our studio audience that you didn't see and is not available anywhere else. Witness Dr. Dollar and his guests answer the toughest questions on defeating addiction and living free. So that's the God is Big, Sin is Small life course, Creflo Dollar's book, You Can Stop, and the program you saw today, plus the exclusive Q&A on DVD for your gift of $60. But wait, we're adding one more item to this collection. If you call right now, you will also receive Matt Pitt's complete testimony on DVD. You and your family will be encouraged as Matt walks through his supernatural deliverance from drugs and how he started a youth ministry reaching thousands across the globe. Call now to get these incredible resources shipped to you right away. Victory and freedom are yours today. Send us your questions and your stories. We want to hear from you. Now don't forget to tune in again next week right here on your world. I'll see you then. We thank the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries for making this program possible.